Yo, what up guys, it's Flark, and what? What's this? Oh no. What is this ability doing on my bars? What have I done? What's going on? That's right. A new era is upon us. We are shattering the bonds that tied us to Necrolor. Uh, okay, well, not, not really, but it's pretty fun. And it gives you a ton of stats and it's a super silly build. And I really wanted to show it with you guys. Yes, we've seen these synergies before, actually. But uh, every time they add a new layer of borrowed power to the game, these synergies get more and more intense until it actually is crafted a pretty powerful and remarkably fun build to play. So I had to show it with you guys. Let's talk about those synergies real quick. We've got Fear Mons. D&D gives you 15% haste. We've got the Unity Legendary for Night Fae. Death's Dew gives you 20% strength when it's fully stacked up. Uh, and remember, Death's Dew replaces D&D. &D. And of course, now you saw Defile. Well, that makes it a 20 second recharge instead of a 30 second, makes it do more damage and makes it grow when it hits people. Okay, well, that's all good, but oh, Death's Echo, Death's Advance, Death Grip, and Death and Decay get an additional charge. Yes, not only are you reducing the cooldown of your Covenant ability, you're also giving your Covenant ability a second charge. Now we've seen these synergies before, like I said, but all of these things and the double legendary and the four set and all the stats that they generate has finally reached a critical mass where this build is actually playable. Now I'm gonna give you the rundown real quick and I'm gonna show you some clips at the end and if that seems enticing enough, then you can try it out for yourself. And if it doesn't, of course, A-Bomb is still absolutely remarkable. And yes, that is still the thing that we're gonna run most situations, pretty much every situation. But if you're looking for a change of pace and you wanna see one of the most ridiculously broken stat builds of all time, well look no forward, uh, further rather, than this one right here. So, uh, talents, let's start with those. Now, if you've seen my last Unholy uh, video, you know that there's two builds, one for sustain, one for pet. Well, this has a ton of pet damage because it has a ton of haste, which means you really wanna run that pet burst build. And here's how you build it. All will serve. You have a ton of haste, he attacks real fast, you're gonna love it. Unholy Blight, that makes all your pets do more damage. That's an obvious one. Grip of the Dead, because you have all of this D&D value. Of course, if you're running a comp with no stuns, you're gonna wanna run Asphyxiate, but if you have like a Windwalker on your team, or you have a ton of stuns, maybe you have a Holy Priest and a DH, you got Chastise and Nova and Fell Eruption, that's a ton of stuns. You could run an AoE 90% slow with two charges on a long duration and a short cooldown. That's actually pretty exciting. Uh, Pestilent, because you have a ton of haste, and of course this, you're gonna be bursting so many wounds that you're gonna give Runic Corruption up more, which means you can continue bursting more and you never run out of resources. Great for this build. Spell Eater, I just love having uh, immunity to CC during my burst window, um, which this still has, because the Unholy Assault will get there in a second. Here's Defile, this was one of the big ones, so let me take a second and talk about it. Remember, this reduces the recharge of your Covenant ability by 10 seconds, but it also, does more damage than your regular covenant ability and gets bigger. So let me put one over there. Here's the default size of it, right? It's all right, but it's kind of a tiny spot on the ground. Well, what if you put it on people? And it grows every single time it hits them and grows and grows and grows. And hey, look, my proc fears. Oh my God, it procs so much, but there is a huge defile on the ground. You can see it's already off cooldown. You're starting to see where this power actually lies in this build. But yes, defile, extremely important. Never swap off of it. This is hilarious. It does a ton of damage. Actually, it, um, <clears throat> it gets bigger and bigger and it has a shorter cooldown tons of synergy with your Covenant ability. And then finally, the thing that ties it all together for the pet burst build that's on Holy Assault, gives you a ton of haste, uh, gives you four wounds so you can immediately APOC, and then gives all that haste to the APOC ghouls and all of the pet modifiers, and you just start going ham. Uh, on Holy Assault, great for this build, great for having a lot of haste, and we'll get into a reason uh, in a second when I talk about stats, why it's actually better than expected. But um, those are the PvE talents. Let's talk about the PvP talents real quick. We got Death's Echo, this is a staple, you can't not run this. This is the thing that gives your Covenant ability an additional charge as well as those other uh, utility buttons. So it's not just for Death's Due, it's actually really good utility. You got double grip against those pesky mages, you got double Death's Advance so you can never be peeled or you can kite easier. It's actually a fantastic PvP talent when you're forced to run it for this uh, Night Fae setup. And of course now, Necrotic Wounds, that's every 
unholy build. You cannot swap off this, which means you have two locked in already. These are two non-negotiable PvP talents, but let's talk about this last one. Now, I talked about Ray's A-Bomb in the last uh, video that I made for Unholy. It's actually even better now, because again, you have so many pet modifiers and so much haste that uh, this guy attacks really fast. Now, he's a bit of a blumbering doofus, okay? But with all this haste, if you can get it on the right target or you just swap to whatever target he's hitting because you have the most target swapping capability with this build that I've ever seen, he does, I think I've seen him do about 70,000 damage because he's attacking faster because you have more haste and applied 14 wounds. That's 14 free wounds on a not too bad cooldown with the 70,000 damage. That is so good for more damage, more bursts, more necrotic wounds, and of course, more bursting for your APOC to come back up. So Ray's A-Bomb actually has a ton of life to it, but you know that since these other two talents are locked in, sometimes you have to run zone, like RMP or Wizards, where you're just gonna die otherwise. Ray's A-Bomb doesn't do anything if your whole team is dead. So if you need to swap to Dome of the Ancient Shadows, you're going to use this as your variable PvP talent, but these two are locked in. So you'll swap out Ray's A-Bomb for Dome, and that is your entire talent build, easy. Easy, easy, easy. You got a few choices you can make between Crypt of the Dead and his fix, raise A-bomb and zone. But other than that, you've got it locked in. That is how the build works. Let's talk real quick about the gear for this build now. Of course, we talked about this earlier. This is the Fear Moans Legendary Nightmare. Let's look at it in the, uh, the uh, loot right here. This is Fear Moans, 15% more haste while you're in D&D. &D. We already talked ad nauseum about all the D&D &D modifiers that you have and how frequently that's gonna be up pretty much permanently. So you're always having 15% haste. That's 15% perma haste and a chance to fear. You saw that on the dummies earlier. That's a three second crowd control effect that's spammable and AOE. Actually pretty interesting at disrupting globals or even getting it on a healer if they're gripped in. Uh, it interrupts a few of their heals if they're, if they're casting. It's a pseudo interrupt, pretty hilarious. Then of course we've got Death's Dew Legendary. This is from Unity. You're gonna have this automatically. Um, this is 20% perma strength effectively because of the two charges and the reduced cooldown this is 20 percent perma strength um so that is a must of course you're always going to run unity but that's what kind of brings it all together um for nightmare i crafted it with haste and mastery on the neck so i could get a free socket and because on the neck you get to choose the secondary stats that you want i had tons of verse already and haste and mastery are so key to this build haste for a reason I'll talk about in a second, Mastery, just because it makes your Defile do more damage, it makes all your pets do more damage. Of course, Mastery is good. So I wanted a little less first and a little bit more Mastery. Uh, and uh, those are the legendaries that I'm running and that's where I crafted them. I, you can craft the Unity on Waste, but I didn't feel like recrafting Unity just for this video, but yes. Uh, Unity on Waste with Haste Mastery would probably be better. Um, finally, for Trinket, you got Insignia, that's a must. It's sustained damage, it's haste, it's everything you ever wanted. In Rune of the Fallen Crusader, we always run that. So no question marks there. Is there a question mark around the tier set? Absolutely not. Run the four set, guaranteed. You got it on Helm, Shoulders, uh, gloves and legs. Those are your four set pieces. And of course you're gonna run it. It synergizes perfectly with this build. So what stats are we running? Well, I talked about it tons of times, but to finish it up here, as much haste as humanly possible. I got about 25% first. I know that feels a little low, but the stain is so important to build and you need as much haste and mastery as possible. Then a little bit less mastery because you're going to get some from Naya, which again, we'll talk about in a second. So that is as much haste as possible. Look at that, I have more haste than first. That rarely happens. Verse second from all your PVP gear and then mastery, you still want it. Uh, enough of that, about five to 700 would be good. Uh, crit you want none of. Literally zero crit if you can afford it. And you can, you can get down to exactly 40. Um, and that's your gearing, that's your gearing. But let's talk about haste for a quick second. Why is haste so good? You got haste from fear moans. You got haste from unholy assault. What the heck are you doing? You should get more mastery, it would make you do more damage. Well, here's something interesting about all these haste modifiers that you're adding to this spec. They're multiplicative. When I put on D&D, &D, it says I get 15% haste, right? Well, I go from 31% to 51%. Huh, that's not 15%, that's 20%. That's just more overall. And when I Unholy Assault 2, I'm gonna go up to 80% haste instead of 70%. What on earth is happening? That is the power of multiplicative modifiers. They 
compound like that and give you more than they were going to give you originally with all the modifiers being calculated in a multiplicative way. Bottom line for people who don't care about the math behind it, though it is fairly simple, you get more haste than these things show up as the more haste secondary stat you have. I got 30% from this, 20% from D&D, and altogether I'm rocking 80% haste from just my own abilities. Just think about how crazy that would be with PI. Um, so again, the more secondary stat of haste that you just build into your gear, the better your cooldowns and legendaries become. So that is why haste is so insanely good, but we're gonna talk about the Soulbinds real quick. So let me segue on over to that. We got Naya. She's gonna give us mastery. This is going to help give us enough mastery. So we're taking advantage of how fast our pets are attacking by making them do more damage. Uh, Grove Invigoration gives you two stacks of this whenever you defile, which is 25 mastery each. That's 50 mastery in total. But like I said, you got a shorter cooldown on defile and you got two charges. So stacking this up is gonna be really easy, giving you a ton of mastery all the time. You're gonna go down this path that you see here. I'll take my hands off the screen so you can screenshot it or pause it if you wanna see it right here. But here are the conduits that are so important. Withering ground, this is a big one. Look at that number on your screen. What does that say? 165% increased damage, yes. It's been buffed. You got the enhanced conduits. I got a 278 version. This is, well, that's a lot more damage for Defile. And with all those other modifiers, this is what makes it actually hit comically hard when you have it over the course of an entire game. If you're playing against a melee cleave, it will be your top, top damage. Imagine that DNB being your top damage, just unbelievable. You're gonna go down, run without tiring, put on chilled resistance, put on insatiable appetite. These are obvious picks. Eternal hunger, that is a staple of all and holy specs. Convocation, another staple of all and holy specs. Go down to Hardened Bones and now you're done. And this is going to give you the full setup for perfect unholy um, burst conduits and sustained conduits that are Eternal Hunger and Convocation. They just become even better, better in this build because of all the haste giving you pet synergies and all the haste giving you more procs of Convocation so you can reduce that APOC cooldown further. And of course, all the standard defensive options, Insatiable, Hardened Bones, and you get some healing here from Bonded Hearts. It's all good. It's all well and good. And that is how you're going to get tons of haste multiplicative modifiers, mastery from Naya, 20% strength permanently from Death's Dew. This is insane how much stats you can get, but let's take a look at it real quick. Um, here's how my opener tends to go. I drop a raise A-bomb down, let's pull my pets back so we can uh, get the full picture, right? I'm gonna drop a raise A-bomb down over there. I'm gonna pop Unholy Assault to get the haste. APOC immediately with the four wounds generated from Unholy Assault to get all those APOC ghouls out. And I'm gonna have a sh ton of haste <laughs> from uh, Defile and Unholy Assault. So these APOC ghouls are gonna immediately start hammering. Dark Transformation, Unholy Blight. And of course, before all of that comes down, Defile on the ground in front of me, giving them a 90% slow and giving me all my modifiers. And then I'm just gonna start spamming Scourge Strike. And I'm gonna have so much haste and I'm gonna be spamming more Scourge Strikes than you've ever seen. Festering when I run out of wounds, but I might not because again, my Raise A-Bomb is clawing at him, applying a wound every second, which is tons of damage. Um, and that's how it looks. So let's bring up the stats right here so you can see uh, that I can prove to you that when I drop my Raise A-Bomb, I get my Defile down and I Unholy Assault. Well, I just got 82% haste. You can see it on the left side of the screen. You do unlimited damage. So many wounds. You can see, uh, a-bomb's doing that thing he does, hitting the wrong target. But look at this now. Death's Dew, I just refreshed the uptime buff of Death's Dew, meaning I will always have 20% more strength because of the second charge that you get from the PvP talent. And look, there it is, refreshed again. So I have 51% permanent haste. 81% haste in my burst with no outside effects, no power infusion, no heroism, no blood loss from a hunter, nothing. 81% haste with just my abilities, 51% permanent. Mastery goes up from Naya all the time. We can get up to like 50, 55%, and 20% permanent strength, which also, we got Rune of the Fallen Crusader, that's another 15%. It is insane. It is truly insane. You have never ending damage. You have never ending 
permanent maximum haste that you could possibly have, which gives you more survivability, more utility. Your guys, are, you can always keep people slowed. You never run out of resources. Your pet damage is absurd. Your wound damage is absurd. You always have maximum necrotic wound stacks. I know it's actually enticing to play this. It is pretty dang funny. It's some of the highest sustain you will ever have on any spec. Once you've got it down, once you've figured it out, you will outdamage everybody in the game and it will not be close. You will always, always, always do more damage than everybody. But it's a little clunky because you got to make sure you're putting that D&D on your feet on cooldown forever. You got to use all your tools, chains, the D&D slow, stuns from you, stuns from your teammate, both grips to keep them in this. Now, I know you're thinking, why would they ever just stand in that? They're just going to walk out. Well, first, you have all those ways to stop. But second, after they all of those things to stop are used and they start walking out, it's already time to put down your next defile. So they walk out and you immediately put down another defile where they're walking to, which is another 90% slow that stacks up. So yes, it's a joke, it's a meme, it's a gimmick, it's comedic, but well, it's the highest damage comedic build that I think I've ever built. And of course, I think there's nothing left to do now that I've given you guys the rundown but show you some uh, example games so you can maybe make that final decision if this is just stupid enough for you to try it out. I uh, hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Chains Warrior, Chains Priest, Chains Ret. Where are you going? Give me everything, Ret. Uh-oh, I assume, okay. Give me everything when you can. You can find. Oh, I got a lot of damage here, man. It never ends, it never ends, it never ends. It's our dome, I see. Obviously. I wonder if he got me that painting. Ripping him back. These guys are pretty tanky. And they do a ton yeah. of damage. But I do a ton of damage too. I should have kicked that. Oh my god, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I walk over and kick this guy, man. We get bubble here, you're MB. No. He's getting the shatter. Nice. Nice fear, buddy. Have a lot of damage. He sanked it. Mm. Oh, you... Gonna wanna grip him back. Kick this guy. Got Dark Arc in 10. Ooh, that's really good. Freed. So weird playing without his fix. Chance. Big DD. Nice, he walked over and kicked that guy too. I love this guy. Purge that if you can. I get it, I get it. Nice. Yeah, I get a sorry for proc right now. I'm just hammering, I'm just hammering, I'm just hammering. Kicked him? Oh, his rally fell in this. Jesus. Nice game, man. Right. Consistent. Speaking of which, I have damage. My A bomb's gonna go lock. We got some cleave pressure, baby. Oh, you think that you figured it? Okay, that's a little sketch. Maybe I grip the lock in here. No, it's bad. Whew, they get a lot going on right now, dude. I think it might be full team kill, unless we can kill them, honestly. We have a ton of damage too soon. Oh man, it's getting rolled. His freedoms are just the kid, the backbreaker though. And I have no opportunity to purge. I know, I know, I know. Oh, the fear. I kicked him though. Yo, oh, what a heal. Probably Hellstone too, right? I have D&D down. Oh, yeah. I finally yeah, I think he's run it. out of stuff. Yeah. I might be able to lock, lock him down in this one. Damage. damage is going crazy. Gripping him back. Ooh. Going right. dark soon. Kick them. Flight. Pet kick the H-bar. Lots of good stuff going on. Tons of damn okay. here. He's running out of cooldowns. We got the disperse. He's running completely out, man. I'm gonna knife a blink after him, chasing him down. He can't leave us. He can't get up, uh, get us off him. That's huge heal from him. My day mess aggressively yeah. here because I think we have kill. We definitely have kill, right? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! Shit, dude! Wow. I guess my uh, warrior got peeled. He's getting cranked. Yeah, this might be it. Wow, we were so close, me. too. Nice heal, nice heal. All right, he's coming in. This is it. Oh, no. Wow, oh, no, he I'm lives stunned. again. Now you're dead. Wait, we kicked him. 
Oh my god! What a game! <laughs> Got a lot of damage here. Oh my god. The nukes are coming out. Nice. You got a good fear there, though. Got a good fear. I don't think I really care about this link since they're getting cleaved to death. I have an APOC. We don't care about the it's link. It's probably bubble here. It's bubble. I don't know. I'm going to be able to get it. I'll try. I'm bolting I don't now. think so. I don't think so. You got it. You got it. Cool. I don't really. It doesn't really matter. I don't have uh, a super go, but I always have damage. Crypting him back. Ripping him back again. Root didn't matter. Chains. Damage in 15. Nice fear. It's bot. Yeah, I'm gonna get it out of this hodge. Okay. I have uh That's last thing I get. It's alright. You want dark? I have uh yes, 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 yes. Anything you have, I'll take. Kicked him, kicked him, kicked him. Status. So funny, man. You're gonna have to purge everything off him. Like right now, like right now, right like right now. Okay. Okay, he just casted my face. This is looking really good. I don't think my warrior's gotten a memo. I wonder if he's able to see me on the screen. Hey, he got gripped in. Now he'll play the now he'll hit the right guy. Oh, I gripped this back, change it. Which move? Last purge. Oh, get that. Nah, it's going to be behind the pill. Oh my god, did you get it? Oh, and you deathed him. No way it. you just did that. That was naughty. That's a, that's a J classic. Maybe I'll have to put that one in the YouTube video just for you, buddy. Get everything on me as soon as you can. A-bomb is kind of trolling right now, but it's fine. He's here to look pretty. And boy, oh boy, does he ever. Oh, man. Oh, man, he's actually just running from everything. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, what a dick. It's all right, my damage never ends. It's That was all just fake damage. Now comes the real damage, Jake. Pet stunning off his oh, thing. Goodness. Holy shit, he's just draining 100% to full. Oh my goodness. Aflocks are wild. Uh, I could AMS that. Maybe I didn't have to. I don't know. I probably should have because I'm going to AMS after the end of his damage. Oh no. Oh, no. Crypt him back, chance. This is super drain. Oh, I get a Soul Reaper proc. Oh, he's raiding it. It's going to proc, guaranteed. Is it guaranteed Soul Reaper? Dark Ark and 10. I have 50% more pet damage. This is the greatest day of my life. This never happens. Oh my god, he got a huge heal, though. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Dark Ark will be perfect uh, when you have it. You want it now? Yes, 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 yes. Look at this. Did I get it? Yeah, I did. Just good. I'm just doing nuclear damage right now. No, weird. My Soul Reaper? No. Oh my god, the fucking... Uh... Look at this guy, he's gone. Okay, but not anymore. He's back. Okay, another grip. ID and D over there. He's so mad. Probably not though, honestly. He seems like a happy dude. Apoc. Tons of damage here. I don't know if you have any modifiers to give me, but I'll take him. Yeah, Dude, me, he one. never maybe runs one. out of mobility. He's the fastest lock. Oh, so we have proc. It's got to be over. Maybe not. Oh my god, it's just so much damn. This is too funny, man. That's pretty. It's pretty nutty. It uh, really is, actually, isn't it? Dude, I got a Soul Reaper proc at the end there. He got topped to about 70%, and my pet's just autoing him like three per second for 7k each. Just like, bop, 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 bop. Just taking so much damage. <laughs> <laughs> I bet your Skulker looks like he's shooting a machine gun. He's like, dup, 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 dup. <laughs> yeah. nope, we'll get farmed. Oh, I got so much damage coming out right now. Dude, I'm, I'm just swear to God. This is the most damage in the history of the game. No, he darked. I grip him a little bit. I don't know. It's not worth it. I'm just going to read Andy. He's dying through all of this, man. That's Rapture Bubbles? Got gripped away? He's like, get out of the defile, bro! <laughs> <laughs> it's destroying you! <laughs> I have another one, don't worry. Alright, they were able to stabilize with Dark and... Uh, mm, self-healing, but we're still looking good. I swear we just yeah. do damage. I don't even go in there. No objective play at all. We just win off them. 
It's already almost doom. Oh my god, Fearmones Prox. It's all coming together. It's all coming together, team. Pets on him? Hello? I need a Soul Reaper proc more than F. Not getting it, not getting it, not getting it, not getting it. I need runes. Okay, we're fine. I have D&D &D in a sec. How long until your set of CDs, bro? Wait, uh, he's got super MS on him. Now. Okay, okay, okay. I think it's all over. He's running in for the fear. I looked for this. Didn't even care. IBF that. Still don't care. He's completely oom, dude. I swear to God, I've done 50k DPS sustain. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Smack this lock. Chancing him over there. A bomb down. File down. Grip that, of course. Purchase freedom if you can. He's schmoofing. Gripped him back. He's taking a lot of damage. That's Bop. You can get that too. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So good, man. I'm He's cool. taking a ton of damage here. This is wild. I have to trigger this. Nice, nice, nice. Good dome, good dome. Mod's here. Oh, uh, should okay. be fine. No, I just D&D'd &D right as he ported my fault. But that's right. We got a lot out of him there. Next set of bursts is going to be really good. Feared. Peeked him on shot up here. Um, I used a lot early, obviously, since that's the way we're playing, but... Hopefully the warrior can get back. Oh, you got him back. Nice. He's taking it, man. I think he just dies. Sick. Some of them are hitting for 1.6k. It's just the, the amount of damage sources you have are so ridiculous. Look at this. It's just really hard to shake all the damage off of you. It never ends.